My name is Konsta Happonen, uh, and I am, I think I was an advisor in this project. That is my title. Asiantuntija, Finnish. Yes. <laughs> We're not that big on titles in Open Eyes. So. Not, not very much, no. Um, and I got to be a part of, of, of this team that, that does this uh, project on, on open citizen science because we at Open Knowledge Finland have, have this uh, project called Biodiversity Map, uh, which is uh, basically conservation science done, done by a lot of citizens, different citizens, uh, some who have academic degrees, some even in biology, but most do not. And we try to create this uh, map of valuable forests in a part of Finland uh, based on openly available data. And this uh, work package that, that I was responsible for is based on the experiences and, and difficulties that I had or we had while doing the projects. Uh, and and I try to identify certain obstacles and and lack of services that hindered the progress of this citizen science project. Um, this is not. Okay. Very much. Um, so, to group the questions that I, I try to answer into a, a couple of, of lines, um, what digital services uh, they, that support open citizen science there exist uh, or are being developed? Uh, how could they be better? Uh, how do the guidelines for research conduct take citizens to account? As, as part of re research teams or as, as active participants in research. And then how do copyright laws of the European Union and, and Finland uh, affect uh, crowdsourcing research? Uh, this is by no means a comprehensive list of different uh, questions that could be asked about the uh, infrastructure or research environment, because the scope of citizen science is, is wide. Um, and as Heidi already said, we are still open to input from you guys uh, for different aspects to take into account. And Heidi actually mentioned already a couple of things about uh, infrastructure on her presentation. Um, So, a couple of services that we use in the biodiversity map were, were the data management planner uh, Tuli to make a data management plan. Uh, and then we went th through or tried a couple of uh, data repositories. I went, went uh, and checked what kind of services do they have. Do they have, for example, persistent identifiers uh, uh, for the datasets that are uploaded uh, do they support <coughs> version control of the datasets because citizen science projects uh, or in citizen science projects the data collection often is not a one shot uh, that the, the data collection actually continues for a long time and often uh, the mm, data that comes out of the project is updated on on some temporal temporal basis and and so it's important that when the data is uploaded somewhere uh, that you can if you do science on that data that there is some like formal version of the data that you can link to but also that 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 if you link to some data and more data are added afterwards that, that you can find the new data afterwards also. Uh, and we found out that um, there are no Finnish services currently that uh, give this 
this option. Uh, but certain other repositories do exist. For example, Z uh, the Dryad uh, NGO operated repository does offer that that option, and the European Union U that uh, does not support versioning of digital object identifiers, but they are developing their service and it will be a part of it once they finish uh, building up their service. It's a fairly new service. Uh, then there are some specialized services for crowdsourced data collection, uh, none of which were really relevant from the uh, point of our project. Um, and Yeah. Um, some recommendations for these, these services on how to develop them further. Uh, the Data Management Planner tool recommends uh, giving data uh, CC BY licenses for attribution of the data, which is uh, unnecessarily res restrictive. And, and I have a couple of slides on why. <coughs> CC BY is not a very good license for, for, for data, especially data. Um, and as I said before, adequate uh, European services for archiving complete data sets do exist, um, but no reliable services for collecting uh, general observational data currently exist. So as, as I said, there are uh, field-specific services, but for example in, in the biodiversity map project we were interested in, in collecting data about the uh, dead wood contents of forests and we could not find a, a service that, that where we could have just uploaded our observations on the go. Mm. I always try to speak clearly, but, but perhaps I should uh, get some training because I always seem to run out of voice. Um, anyways, uh, the existing guidelines uh, are mostly relevant for citizen science as well, which is, I think, remarkable because uh, open science and citizen science are often described as this like game changer. Or, or system change, so it's 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 quite quite nice to see that the people who have made, for example, the uh, responsible conduct conduct of research for Finland uh, have made it such a like flexible ethical rule that most of the um, guidelines there are actually relevant to citizen science as well. For example. Uh, principles regarding authorship, data storage, and data usage rights should be negotiated in the research group beforehand. So uh, there are some, some issues with language there if you think this thing from the perspective of citizen science, because what is a research group if, if every citizen can be uh, part of the research? Is it some... But, but if you understand that that everybody who participates in the research is part of the research group, then most of the, these guidelines are still good. But m perhaps the language could be clarified in the next version a little bit. And, and also, I think, and I think this is an important thing uh, regarding uh, data auth authorship and the issues that we discussed before I started going through these slides uh, in, in the question from the aud audience that agreements for partic participating citizen scientists on, on these guidelines on authorship and, and data storage and data usage rights uh, should be gotten from the citizens in some written form or by making them agree to uh, terms of use for the service that, that's used to collect the data. Uh, because a lot of hassle with, with copyrights and, and and licenses could be avoided that way. Let me just check what, what's my next slide. Yes. Um, and also, um, 
some of the guidelines for data authorship, for example, by the uh, Social Science Data Archive, uh, state that, that authorship should go to people who have uh, contributed significantly to the scientific idea of the data set. And I think that's, that's a bit that's a bit kind of out of date thinking because in, in, in the world of open data and open science, data sets are not used for only for one specific uh, uh, paper or, or some specific research, but they are potentially used for a much wider synthetic kind of research where, where data flows from all sources. And then it's, it's kind of old-fashioned to think that, that data authorship should go to the person who has thought about what this data is going to be used for instead of authorship going to the people who actually work uh, to collect the data or put in, in hours of their work, especially considering citizen science because citizen scientists often do not get compensation or monetary compensation at, well, at, at least uh, for the work that they put into collecting different data. And, and I think that's, that's something that we should actually have uh, like a larger discussion on, that uh, how do we define data authorship? And it's most probably going to be project specific because different citizen science projects are, are very different in scope. We have, we have projects that collect data from hundreds of people from all over the world that have gone, over, gone on for, for, for years and years and that, that create masses of data. And then we have these uh, where one person might have collected one observation and another person might have collected 10,000 observations on, of data. And then uh, some projects might be made by a small team uh, where the total number of observations or or data points might be only some tens of data points, uh, but in any case, no, no, like my recommendation for for the default is that that in citizen science projects, all people who participate in the collection of data are marked as authors because there are uh, digital ways to mark uh, to to further clarify what, what has been the participation of, of every author of the data. But as I said, it's, this could be the default, but uh, it has to be project specific. Then a couple of slides on, about the data licensing. Yes. So a CC by uh, for li license or Creative Commons attribution license is uh, the current recommendation of, of public administration for licensing data from public sources and this is probably why it has also been adopted by the Data Management Planner Tooly as the recommended license for data. But uh, this goes against uh, some other, uh, some other, definition. Definition. <laughs> uh, some other definitions of, of open data where open data can be used by anyone for any purpose <laughs> and without restrictions. And uh, even though an attribution license might be the minimum restriction that you can put on a data set, it is still a restriction. It, it demands that you attribute the, the creator of the data in some way and that you license the, the resulting or, or that you um, attach the license to, to the resulting new data set. And, and the whole idea of, of citizen science is actually that, that there are these numerous data flows 
that, that you, or, or citizen science and open science. Numerous data flows that, that should be made into a frictionless ecosystem where you could, without hassle, uh, combine data from different sources into new data sets that you do new research on. And, and the Creative Commons licenses may, may have been ma made to be compatible to be used with data sets, but they were originally not planned uh, for this reason, uh, this, this use, but, but more, more to license like writings or artistic works or, or these like discrete things so that if you have a photograph and you license it with, a, with an attribution license that you can copy that uh, photograph and, and say that this was made by someone else but I can use it because it's licensed with a Creative Commons license. But, but how do you attribute, for example, if you have um, a thousand data sets licensed with Creative Commons licenses and other different licenses, uh, and create a new data set. And even if you could do that, and even if it wasn't very hard, there are very few uh, guides on how to do that. So the kind of restriction might come from, from the legal text, which is complicated and which does not specify on how the attribution should be done. So my recommendation would be that uh, whenever data is released, whether it be citizen science projects, but especially in citizen science projects, that they would be released under a uh, uh, public domain dedication like CC0. Mm. Well, that's my last slide, and it's not actually very interesting. Uh, but we have five more minutes, and, and one thing that I wanted to uh, discuss, which I remember that at the start of this project we had some discussions with Heidi and Raimo, but which, which was then kind of left in the background, is, is crowdsourcing, uh, not crowdsourcing, crowdfunding of science as a part of citizen science and, and as, a, as a part of getting citizens to participate in scientific research. And I don't know if, if any of you people who have come here have experience in crowdfunding of research, do you? No. As I understand, the, the legal uh, aspects of crowdfunding are quite complicated and as it stands we only have one, uh, I think Mesenatti is uh, a company, is it not? Yes, it has a business model which uh, helps in crowdfunding research and, and there is literally no training in universities on how to do crowdfunding campaigns and the training is actually done by businesses. So uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts and input on, on the perspectives of crowdfunding campaigns to participate citizens in, in research, if you have any. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I don't have an answer, but I have a point, perhaps, because uh, one thing that is actually sometimes overlooked in this case are the uh, citizen associations and the non-governmental organizations which could be organizing these kind of things. Suomen Latut Association for Skiing in Finland, uh, in a broad sense, is also promoting for outdoor activities and so on, and they have, you know, people who are uh, there uh, to work on these kind of things, and there's, uh, 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 when there's a group of people, there's uh, immediately some kind of a self-organization and so on, and this self-organization is uh, 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 basically forming some smaller stable structures, which could be actually used for these kind of, uh, organizing these kind of activities, because there must be somebody who actually, uh, you know, signs and uh, says what actually happened with the crowdfunded money and so on. So there's also these kind of issues. And uh, uh, this is, uh, as I said, not uh, 
clear picture for me either. It's well, perhaps not my job as, uh, uh, an, as an engineer to engineer these kind of things, but uh, uh, this is something that should be looked into. I have one point also. Uh, do you really consider people producing data or doing research? Because I'm not thinking that way. Uh, any of us can pr pr produce uh, data, machines can pr uh, produce data. I think that in research you have to analyze data, make interpretations. So if you are just pr producing data, it doesn't mean that you are doing research. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Because yes. when you are thinking about all the ships of the papers who, of no. course I understand who owns the data, but if you are just Nowadays, for example, in natural sciences and in medicines, we have a lot of people producing data, but they are not considered that they are doing research. Yes, <coughs> I understand. When I was talking, when I was talking about authorship, there, yeah, I was yeah. talking about authorship of, of the data sets themselves, okay. not, not just not the papers that you saw from analyzing the data sets. Okay. Of course, it's, it's, but it's, it's part of the data. data. Yeah. Analysis they should also get uh, credit. In, in yeah. Yeah. Uh, according to the guidelines of the, the the field, because different fields have different guidelines on, uh, and different journals have different guidelines on, on what you need to do to have authorship on on a paper. Uh, but also, I think that 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 an uh, authorship of data sets is actually very much in line with what what was discussed yesterday at, at the main event of this forum about uh, di diversifying, uh, getting credit for the whole research cycle. So even if, if you do not participate in, in planning the research or do not participate in writing a paper, if you just participate in, in analysis or in data collection, you should get credit for data analysis and, uh, or data collection separately as, as like separate merits in the scientific cycle. Okay, I think my time is up, but what, sorry, yes? One, one comment or one question to you. Uh, getting back to the public administration recommendations that yes. you mentioned, the JHS yes. recommendations, uh, the, the specific one uh, I'm asking you, is it, is it the 189? Uh, I'm not confused with that. Okay, it, it might be that. It is actually recommending uh, CC BY 4.0, yes. uh, but especially for the public sector information. Yeah. Uh, of course, it can be uh, sort of applied to research data also. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, also this same recommendation actually also acknowledges and uh, gives the right to this a, a CC0 license in the cases where there is a good argument, and uh, I guess the one, the arguments that you mentioned, uh, they are probably quite okay. Yes. So in that sense, um, it is it is open which one of these is actually uh, used, and and uh, this is zero is is by all means uh, uh, not not bad choice either. Thank you. Uh, one more point that I want to want to mention is that uh, perhaps the greatest obstacle in for citizen science nowadays is is the deficiency of data because, for example, muni municipal data is is very much behind bars. Uh, there are a few few municip municipalities or cities that have made some of their data open, but even even data that that citizens have a right to access to, they often don't get to because. The people who work for the municipalities don't know you are so lucky. Act on the openness of government activities. Act on the openness of government activities and uh, are hesitant to give uh, data sets or, or, or documents that belong to the public. Thank you.